we're going to look at a nice group theory problem today. And maybe this would be a really good group theory problem for a final exam for a first semester abstract algebra class. So along the way as we solve this, we're going to reference lots of results that you learn in a first semester of abstract algebra, but we won't prove them. So our goal is to classify all groups of order 2021. So obviously that's the year that this video is filmed, which is why we're looking at this. Another thing is that we'll see that the classification of this is fairly simple. Okay, so let's maybe jump into it. The first thing that we want to do is understand the subgroups of this group of order 2021. So let's maybe let G be a finite group of order 2021. And then, like I said, we're going to first analyze its subgroups. So I want to notice to start off that 21, 2021 factors like 43 times 47 and like I just said, for step one, we want to analyze its subgroups. And we're going to use the CELO theorems in order to get a start at analyzing these subgroups. So let's maybe get those CELO theorems on the board right here. Okay, so we've got the results of the CELO theorems on the board. So let's look over them. So we have G, a finite group of order P to the alpha times M, where P is a prime. I didn't write that, but P is a prime, and it does not divide M. So this P to the alpha represents factoring out as many multiples of P from the order of the group. Then we get the following results. G has a subgroup of order P to the alpha. This is going to be true for every prime dividing the order of the group. It has a subgroup that has order the maximum power of that prime. And that's called a CELO P subgroup of the group. Then furthermore, if we set N sub P equal to the number of CELO P subgroups, then we have the two numerical formulas given by this. So N sub P divides M. So that's this number that's left over after pulling out that p to the alpha. And then furthermore, n sub p is congruent to 1 mod p. That gives us uh, very few possibilities, especially in this case, for n sub p. So let's maybe get to it. So given the fact that 2021 factors is 43 times 47, that tells us that g has a subgroup of order 43 and a subgroup of order 47. That's because 43 and 47 are primes. Now, right now, we don't know how many subgroups of order 43 and 47 we have, but we know that we've got at least one of order 43 and at least one of order 47. So now let's use this notation over here and say that n sub 43 equals the number of CELO 43 subgroups. And I want to notice that by this, we have N sub 43 divides 47, because 47 is playing the role of M here. And N sub 43 is congruent to 1 modulo 43. But now, since 47 is prime, that tells us that n sub 43 must be from the set 1 and 47. Those are the only divisors of 47. And then if n sub 43 is congruent to 1 mod 43, that means that n sub 3 has to be from the set 1 and then 44, and then 43 times 2 plus 1. So let's see, that's going to be 87, and so on and so forth. But now intersecting these two sets, we see that n sub 43 is clearly equal to 1. In other words, there is only one CELO 43 subgroup. Let's maybe call it P. So let's let P a subgroup of G be the CELO 43 subgroup. And then very, very similarly, we can show that there is exactly one CELO 
47 subgroup. Let's do that real quick. So let's change this 43 to a 47. That changes this to a 47. And then notice that we're going to have n sub 47 must divide 43. That means that n sub 47 is from the set 1 and 43. Then furthermore, n sub 47 is congruent to 1 mod 47. That means n sub 47 is in the set 1, 48, and then so on and so forth. But from that, it follows that n sub 47 is equal to 1. So in other words, there is only one subgroup of order 47. So let's maybe call that Q. So I'll write Q is also a subgroup of G, and the order of Q is equal to 47. And it's the unique subgroup of order 47. Okay, so let's maybe bring that data to the top and we'll move on. So on the last board, we showed that we had a subgroup of G of order 43. So that's our seal of 43 subgroup. We also had a subgroup of G of order 47. That's our seal of 47 subgroup. Then we also argue using the Silo theorems that that was a unique subgroup of order 43 and a unique subgroup of order 47. Next, we have a fairly standard result that actually occurs before you learn about Silo theorems that says that if H is a subgroup of G and it's the unique subgroup of its order, and here we're assuming that the order of H is finite, then H is a normal subgroup of G. So immediately we see that P and Q are normal subgroups of G. Okay, so that's really important to notice. Now next, I wanna make the following fairly simple claim, and that is that P intersect Q is trivial. In other words, they only share the identity. So how could we maybe show that? Well, let's notice that P intersect Q is a subgroup of P and P intersect Q is also a subgroup of Q. So that follows pretty quickly. But by Lagrange's theorem, we know that the order of P intersect Q divides the order of P, which is 43, and the order of P intersect Q divides the order of 47, which is the order of Q. And that's because the order of a subgroup divides the order of a group, but here this intersection of P and Q is a subgroup of P and it's a subgroup of Q. But 43 and 47 are co-prime. In fact, they're distinct prime numbers. But if we've got a common divisor of those two prime numbers, that means that number is equal to one. So that tells us that the order of P intersect Q is equal to one. So that's another nice thing to keep in mind. So let's see what we've got now. We've got P and Q are both normal subgroups of G and they intersect trivially, but we've actually got a nice result regarding internal direct products that tells us that G is the internal direct product of P and Q. So let's maybe get that result on the board. Okay, so we have that if H and K are both normal subgroups of G, they intersect trivially, and G is equal to HK. So that's a subgroup of elements of H times elements of K, like that. Then our result is that G is isomorphic to H cross K. So this gives us a way of factoring G into this Cartesian product of subgroups. Okay, so let's notice that we almost have that set up already. We have P as a normal subgroup of G, Q as a normal subgroup of G. They intersect trivially. Now we just want to make the claim that G is actually equal to P, Q. But just like when we showed that they intersect trivially, this proof can be done just with kind of numerical analysis. So let's notice that P is a subgroup of PQ and it is not equal to PQ. And 
Q is a subgroup of PQ that is not equal to PQ. But that tells us that the order of P divides the order of PQ. So the order of P is 43. So we have 43 divides the order of PQ. Then the order of Q divides the order of PQ. So that means 47 divides the order of PQ. But if 43 and 47 both divide the order of PQ, that tells us that the LCM of 43 and 47 divide the order of PQ. But the LCM of 43 and 47 is 43 times 47, which is 2021. So we have 2021 divides the order of PQ. But then we know that PQ is a subgroup of G. So also we know that the order of PQ divides 2021. So if 2021 divides the order of PQ and the order of PQ divides 2021, then that tells us that the order of PQ is actually equal to 2021. So we've got a subgroup of our entire group that has order 2021, but the only subgroup that has the same order of our entire group will be the group itself. So it follows now that PQ is actually equal to this entire group G. So now we have that our group G is equal to a Cartesian product of these two subgroups. So now let's get some more results on the board and we can finish this off. Okay, so we've got our last two results on the board that we'll use as tools. One says that every group of prime order is cyclic. So I'll write that like this. If we've got a prime P and we have a finite group G of order P, then G is isomorphic to ZP. Next, if we've got two coprime numbers M and N, so in other words, their GCD is one, then ZM cross ZN is isomorphic to ZMN. So those are fairly standard results. Now let's see what we've got. We've got G is isomorphic to P cross Q, where the order of P is 43 and the order of Q is 47. Those are both primes. So that tells us this is isomorphic to Z sub 43 cross Z sub 47. And that's by this first result. Next, by the second result, we can slam those two cyclic groups together and we get this is isomorphic to Z sub 43 times 47, but that's Z sub 2021. So that gives only one possibility for the isomorphism class of a group of order 2021. In fact, it's cyclic and it must be isomorphic to Z sub 2021. And that's a good place to stop.